First question is from Cam Snade. Are you supposed to flex or te- tense while lifting or just move the weight? Oh, so, see, it depends. It mm. depends on your goal and what you're training for. If you're trying to really develop a particular muscle or connect to different parts of a movement, you want to stay really connected. You want to fl- flex. You want to tense. You want to feel those mu- muscles contracting. This is more of a bodybuilder style of training, and there's a lot of value in it. However, there's also a lot of value in just focusing on moving the weight and perfecting your technique and skill to move more weight. This is how strength athletes train. Both of them are very, very valuable. For example, I can squat, uh, I can do a barbell squat, slow my reps down, and really focus on my quads, like really focus on the knee extension and the squeeze at the top and staying connected at the bottom and give myself a crazy quad pump and burn. And again, I'm going to develop good, nice developed quad muscles from doing that. Or I can get under the weight and just perfect my biomechanics and my technique so I can squat the most amount of weight. And both of them are very valuable. If your goal is to train for a balanced physique, develop your muscles, be strong, mobile, all that stuff, I think you got to do kind of both of these. They're both yeah. important. Well, there's certain things that you can't do. Like, say, like uh, you don't want to be flexed and tense when you do like a, a kettlebell movement, right? Like you have these these mm-hmm. explosive kettlebell movements. Like a swing, you mean? Yeah, you have to be able to be, be fast and loose. Yes, fast and loose. Like in a, like Olympic, there's a lot of Olympic movements where you can't be tense the entire time through Good the movement. Point. You got to be explosive, tense, but then relax. It's all about the movement. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really about guiding and shuttling that force output in the very beginning. So it's very high emphasis on that concentric part of the lift in the very beginning and then just kind of guiding that uh, that weight as it as it accelerates. Right. So it's a totally different type of a technique. But yeah, to your point, uh, it really just depends on what the focus is on and the objective and the intent of the exercise. Yeah, it's, what's funny is when I trained uh, clients, I would do flexing and tensing with correctional exercise. And I'm talking about like new clients. So new clients come and hire me. When I'm telling them to flex and tense a muscle, it's when I'm doing correctional exercise and trying to get them to feel certain muscles and connect to certain parts of a movement. But then when I would teach them traditional exercises, I never said, hey, while you're squatting, I want you to really feel it in your glutes. That didn't happen until later. It was more like, let's perfect the skill of the squat. Let's perfect the skill of a press. Let's perfect the skill of a, of a deadlift. And then later when they got the skill down and I could see that they were squatting well and doing all, the, all you know and deadlifting well and all that stuff, then when there were areas they wanted to focus on, I would say, you know, squeeze your glutes here, focus on your quads there. Uh, so it is they're both very valuable and it's funny how there's like two camps. Like which one do I do? I mean, no, both I actually there. train the op I actually train more less about the movement and more about keeping tension throughout the movement. Like so I, I guess it's the bodybuilder esque background mm-hmm. that I come from. Like that was I always felt like if I got a client to really feel the entire movement really, really well, then I could teach more dynamic, explosive things where you ask them to be quick or loose and then tight. Like I find that that's a little bit more of an advanced technique to be able to do that. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't do fast and loose. I'm talking about just traditional squat, press. Like when I did an overhead press with a new client, I wasn't like, feel this in your delts. It was about your posture, your technique, and your form. Practice that. And then later, if they're like, hey, I want to develop more of this or that, then I would through the movement, then I would get them to focus. But you're you're right with the fast stuff. No, no, no. You, you can't sit there and connect to a kettlebell swing. You ever seen a bodybuilder or somebody who trains right. bodybuilding trying to do that? Oh, yeah. It looks it's, really Well, that was the first thing that came to cringery. mind when we this question came up. I was thinking, yeah. like, all I could picture was a tense, buff bodybuilder trying to do a kettlebell swing. Yeah. yeah. And it just, it looks it looks awkward. It's because a squat and a lateral raise at that point. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it looks like. But, yeah, I mean, uh, there's tons of value in, in either of these. I think, for example, if you were to follow MAPS Powerlift, um, the focus is on the movement. It's, it's about technique, form, biomechanics, and movement. Now, you follow a program like MAPS Aesthetic, and it's very much about flexing and tensing and developing particular muscles. Which one is better for you? They both are. They're both going to give you tremendous value, and I think it's a mistake to only focus on one and not the other. I think both of them will develop the best body that you ever had because I there's a very different feel from when I'm squatting and trying to focus on a, a muscle group versus when I'm just trying to squat and get better at squatting. It's a very different mentality, you know, going into the movement. 